Okay, I think we'll, we'll call the meeting to order at this time. Uh, we'll have the pledge and then a moment of silence. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, at this time we're going to recess the, the board meeting and open a public hearing on the purchase of the uh, property at 230 West 18th Street. Uh, I'd like to review what's going on with that then. The uh, state statute requires <coughs> that the board purchase of any adjoining public property, uh, adjoining property for uh, school or other public purposes, that you have a public hearing. Uh, which has been notified in the newspaper, published uh, two times, the first time 15 days before the meeting, I don't believe it was, or something like that. Uh, the publication has met the standards of the statute. Uh, after the close of the public hearing, you'll be asked to uh, adopt a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to purchase the property. Uh, there is an agreed price. <coughs> After your resolution, the purchasing agent has to receive at least two uh, appraisals, and the average of the appraisals has to be the value or more. You cannot pay more than the average of the two appraisals. Those two appraisals have been received, and they are uh, both slightly <coughs> above the purchase, uh, purchase price that's been agreed to. So if you approve the resolution, uh, the purchase will be done uh, hopefully by the end of the month. So uh, we, we have not received title insurance commitment yet so that'll take a little while i don't know how how ready the realtor is with that but uh, uh, the school will receive that i'll either i or rachel will review that and get word back to go ahead and close if if everything's ready to go i expect it is they've been had the house on the market for a while um, but everything's ready to go it's now the opportunity for the public to speak to either influence you yes to purchase or to reconsider or not spend the money or whatever their concerns are and then you'll be uh, close that public hearing and we'll have the resolution later on on the agenda okay thank you ted At this time we'll open it up to public uh, any comments or questions okay if not uh, we'll close the <coughs> hearing on the property and resume our regular board meeting. Uh, we'll start out with the minutes of uh, October 24th, regular board meeting, and uh, the minutes of the November 8th study session. Are, are there any additions or corrections? If not, I need a motion to approve. I move to approve these minutes. Okay, motion by Steve. I'll second. And yeah, second by Lisa. Any other questions? All in favor? Right. Okay, motion carried by zero. Financial report. Well. So we've got um, claims 10,331 to 10,479, totaling $853,445.38 on the board docket of approval tonight. So your payrolls um, are on here as well and listed for public view. Uh, when it comes to fund report, our general fund started at $201,339. We had $998,357.93 in receipts. Our <coughs> expenses for the month were $725,342.26, leaving an ending balance of $464,354.67. Um, pretty much a normal month of um, payroll and benefit expenditures. From there, we did uh, move $275,503.55 in the utilities um, that were paid out for, through um, two utilities over the course of the month. Um, we're able to pay them out of CPF per state statute, and um, that was done in, in October. Um, that was the biggest thing going on in general fund. 
debt service uh, started with $1,852,205.27. We had some uh, property tax replacement credits in the amount of $8,663.45. No expenditures for the month, leaving an ending balance of $1,860,868.72. One October and so going on to capital projects fund, we started with $968,595.57, excuse me, $4,210.98 in receipts. We had expenditures um, in the amount of $611,732.99, living and ending balance of $361,073.50. And then in capital projects fund is where we pay for our tech technology salaries and benefits. Um, and expenditures were higher in this area because that's where those um, general fund utilities were charged to CPF for the month of October. Transportation fund, um, we started with $966,502.70. Had receipts of $2,083.50 from, again, property tax replacement credits. Our expenses for the month were $55,233.89, leaving us an ending balance with $913,352.31. Um, again, salaries and benefits for our transportation, bus, um, bus drivers, and repair maintenance to buses were our expenditures in this area. Last but not least is the bus replacement fund. We started with $348,581.68. I'm sorry, $348,044.97. My apologies. We had $536.71 in PTRC. Again, that's the property tax replacement credit that we get. Um, no expenses. I've confirmed with the store that the buses will be in in December, so that'll be on the December docket. They have one of them's arrived and it's getting um, prepped and staged, ready for us to use it when we get it in December. And the other one's shortly coming behind, so by the time they they make it their way, it'll be December and we'll pay it out before the year is up. So ending balance in bus replacement fund is $348,581.68. Um, okay, no questions? Thanks, Val. Well, we'll need a motion to approve the financial report. So moved. Okay, motion by Jenny. I second that. And second by Steve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right. Okay, motion carried 5 0. Okay. Into donations. <clears throat> We have the Optimus Club, Life Skills for Pumpkin pip Picking, $500. Optimus Club, uh, the High School Spanish Club Trip for Pumpkin Picking, $175. Uh, the Optimus Club for the Key Club, Pumpkin pip Picking. See that? Five times in a row. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to here. <laughs> $35. Optimus Club Jag Pumpkin Picking, $120. Uh, robotics Team, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, $250. And uh, Big R, RMS Life Skills Class for Christmas Store, two boxes of quart canning jars. Are there any others? I always look to Candy. She's always on top of that for us, but I don't believe so. Just, just again generous donations throughout the community and those service clubs that continue to support us it's amazing every month they show up on that list mm -hmm. yeah. really appreciate it three and i can tell you i can tell you the third because he came in smelling like pumpkins one day to one of our meetings so a personal eye to eye thank you yes thank you uh, dan especially keeps the school's needs at the top of the list anytime we we have a momentary break in what's going on. Dan says, I know of a need at the school. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, this morning they approved another one that you'll see next yeah, month. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Okay, name motion to approve the donations. So moved. 
Okay, motion by Brad. I'll second. And second by Lisa. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried, five zero. Thanks again to everybody for uh, the donations. Mm -hmm. The Optimist Club likes to give donations to the youth groups, but the uh, all of those people came and worked really hard, and it makes it much more rewarding for us to give to groups that come and work that hard, because that is a big job <coughs> there, and they all pitched in a great deal for us. That's a good experience for them, too. Those are my favorite couple. kind of fundraisers. <laughs> okay, it's good. Uh, we have overnight field trip. Adam, are you prepared to speak in regards to um, National <coughs> Honor Society and the leadership camp to Kings Island? Sure. <laughs> um, this is a new opportunity for the National Honor Society. Um, we have new advisors this year. Just trying to uh, kind of bulk up what the organization does in the school and in the community. So they found this thing that they thought could teach the kids a lot of important skills and also be fun for the students that were part of the year. Is this Lori Williams? Correct. We, uh, she actually helped when I was the principal at the middle school. We actually did a very similar, Candy's nodding her head, because that was the first time we did that, a trip very similar to Kings Island to embrace those leadership skills and the, the conferences they have to offer, as well as the enjoying the park as well. It's a good, it's a good trip for the kids, and it was, she did a nice job when we did it before. At the middle school level, this would be at the high school. Okay. So there are events at <laughs> Kings Island or and mm -hmm. there, are, there, there are conference breakout leadership. It's it's just like a seminar and then they also have time within the park as well. Okay. Any other questions about the field trip? Do we know how they're going to fund the trip? That's uh, all that too, but it's at the bottom right below the source of funds. That they'll be responsible for raising the money? They'll presenting to local organizations or groups to ask for financial contributions oh. and they'll do fundraising for the students to earn money for the event. All right. Thank you. No, I'm sorry, I wasn't to talk to any. I had the same question because I that's a lot of money to people and yeah. uh, I wanted to make sure they had alternate ways to earn that. So. Oh, okay. I didn't go far. Thanks. And I'm really appreciative of the sponsors for giving this ample time too. Mm -hmm. Because this, this trip is in May. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I looked. I'm like, surely this isn't like in December. <laughs> it's cold at Kings Island. They'll have the whole place to themselves. <laughs> okay. If there aren't any more questions, uh, we'll need a motion to approve the field trip. So moved. Okay. A motion by Jenny. Second. Second by Brad. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay. A motion carried by zero. Oh, next we have uh, some policy readings. Uh, Jenny, did you want to go over any of those? Or? Sure. Um, they're listed first, second, and third, so we can do it in that order. Okay. For the first reading, we just have two. That's what I'm showing. Mm -hmm. um, these were discussed at our November study session. Uh, we have policy 8390 which is animals on school property. And then we also have policy 9700.01 is in regards to advertising. And so this is our first reading for those policies. There'll be two more later before those are approved. The second reading is a group of policies we discussed at our October Sunday study session and then um, brought for first reading last month. It is 2410, 2430, 3120.08, 6320. And those have all been up on the web. The second and third reading policies have been up on our website for any uh, public thought or communication. Um, once we have that first reading this evening, we'll be sure and post those yet this week um, so that we're prepared for next month's as well. Perfect. But they've been up on the website. So that leaves us with the third reading. So I will present these and then we would want to ask to approve these tonight. 
Those are um, policies 0130. That's in our bylaws. There's some correct, just some um, wording changes. 1130, conflict of interest. 1214, 3113, 3214. Those all are conflict of interest policies. 3410, that's a deletion. 4113. 4140, termination and res resignation. 4214, this is gifts. 5610, suspension and expulsion of students. 5610.02, in school discipline. And um, 8500, which is food services. So those, as Mrs. Vance said, have all been up on the website. And that is now our third reading of those. Ted, can we vote on those as a whole? To just, just for clarification, stages. I don't have the first readings up yet. I was waiting for that after tonight. So the first readings of policy 9700.01 and 8390 have not been posted yet. I was waiting for any communication tonight, and then we'll post those yet this week. Yeah. But all of those under second and third readings have been up on the website for probably two weeks now, two and a half weeks, almost three weeks. Policies on second reading, you need unanimous consent to move them to third reading okay. tonight, and then you can adopt all the policies on third reading uh, by the numbers. Okay. Okay, so first we'll need to um, motion to approve the, the readings of the first, second, third. Do I have a motion? The Mo motion to approve the reading, then motion on third to approve the policy. Well, the yeah, the first reading occurs by presentation. Mm -hmm. then the, the, okay. Then the well, we just had on your motion to approve the reading. So I always make a motion that we take these second readings to a third reading if it's unanimous, and then we can move it from there. Right. Okay. I, I'm just waiting on the I second yep. that. Okay. I'll make okay. the motion we take the second readings and move to the third readings upon a unanimous approval to be then. Okay. Forward pass. Okay, motion by Brad to, and second by Steve. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried by zero. Okay, so those have been up on the website. I have not received any additional feedback. So if there's no additional feedback, then yeah. Yeah, so we can go ahead and approve them. Okay, so at this time, uh, we'll need a motion to approve uh, policies listed on the second, which was moved to third, and all the third policies read. I move that we approve all of the policies that have been moved to the third reading and those original third reading policies. Okay. Motion by Lisa. I second that. Second by Steve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried, 5 0. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Surplus items. Um, we had an online auction for several items in the tech department as well as a piano that was over at Riddle. We did um, sell some of those items, but um, there, are a, there, are, there is a handful and you have that copy, which we did not get any bids on. And at this time, we could most certainly use the storage and, and need, to, need to move on. And in fact, we'll probably be bringing more items to you in regards to auction as we continue the technology process, those things. So um, at this point, we need to per permission to go ahead and dispose of or donate those as appropriate and move forward to clean out. I do know that there may be some interest. We haven't made specific phone calls if we can donate some of those items, especially like the piano. Um, I know that at times, I don't know if Scott gets this as well, but we get emails where people will come up and pick up um, laptops, those devices, and will then ship them overseas to third world countries, those types of things who may be able to benefit. So we need the approval to either um, donate or um, destroy those items so that we have that area for storage. But we have sold <coughs> everything that there was an interest and it wasn't a lot. <laughs> But we tried. So you have made the attempt to sell it. And we have. So mm -hmm. it's the needs. What kind of projectors are these? Um, I think they, they should have been overhead projectors. The, the oh. old, uh, you put the plastic yeah. on them. 
Mm-hmm. And nobody wanted those. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody really did. You know? The piano is the big thing. I wish we could donate. I hate to see something like yeah. that. We'll Just most make certainly use make that, that attempt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so we'll need a motion to uh, properly dispose of the surplus items. I move that we properly dispose of the surplus items that were not bid upon during the auction at Jana's <coughs> discretion. And I'll be more than willing. If we find people who are willing to take, we'll make sure that we report out those donations and what's happened to those items so that there's a record and you know that. I second Lisa's motion. Okay. Motion by Lisa and second by Brad. Any other discussion? All in favor? Do we have a question out there first? Jana, where would you, if anybody's watching this on uh, RTV, RTC TV, where would they call? Central office at 223-2159. And we'll be more than willing to help work with that. And we did put the list up on the board, so hopefully mm-hmm. it could be seen. It was up there. Okay. Yeah. We can try to get that on our website as well and post that for donation. Okay. 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 Let's go to the vote again. Okay, most carried fights. Okay, thank you. Typically, I have the radio show tomorrow morning as well. They call in, so we'll make sure that we uh, share that as well at that point in time so that the community has the opportunity. Tom wants anything on trading. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Is that how that works? Okay, we're moving on to the uh, personnel report. For hiring, Patty Barger, middle school special education instructor assistant for eighth grade student. Shannon Belcher, high school, intense needs, instructional assistant and life skills room. Uh, Stacia Conrad, Columbia instructional assistant in charge of temporary classroom safety. Courtney Redden, Columbia one to one special needs instructional assistant. Brenda Cloud, Riddle special needs instructional assistant. We have resignation of Annette Sass, high school intense needs instructional assistant. Barb Geringer, middle school, sixth grade girls basketball coach. Elizabeth Davison, Riddle, instructional assistant. We have uh, family medical leave, Skeeter Doherty, SRO, December 12th, 2016 through January 31st, uh, 2017. Jamie Bach, high school, ECA treasurer, December 29th, 2016 through January 15th, 2017. Uh, we have a club sponsor, Kim Bill, Columbia, continue to direct Zebra Zone program. Sports, Laura, Lauren Atkinson, uh, middle school, sixth grade girls basketball coach. And we have the hiring of Brad Carter, director of facilities. Have any questions? <clears throat> if not, I'll need a motion to approve the personnel report. So moved. Okay. Motion by Jenny. I second that. And second by Steve. All in favor? Hey, motion carried. Uh, Four. Uh, Abstain or disapprove? Um, I'll abstain. Okay. So we got uh, four, four and one abstain. (coughs) Motion carried. (coughs) And at this time, uh, I'd like to introduce Brad Carter. I would, I would like to begin by thanking Jim Swank and Adam Strasser and Terry Thornsberry served on that first round of interviews in regards to Brad. And, and Jim did a phenomenal job of helping guide that conversation and direct that conversation. And there's going to be a transition period here. And, and I think that those two gentlemen are going to work well together. I know Brad is eager to learn from Jim. And, and so I am so appreciative of you gentlemen for being here. and. Then I uh, had a second round interview with Brad where I got an opportunity to meet directly with him and have further conversations and drive that a little bit deeper and and just make sure um, his desires fit our mission statement and our goals. And I I fully believe that. And Brad, if you'd like to take a few minutes and introduce yourself and give us just a little bit of your background, I know we'd be honored to hear that. Jim's laughing because you've been put on the spot this time instead. My name's Brad Carter. I'm the was the facilities director at Argus Community School. Been there 19 years. Um, I have a background of 
very strong HVAC electrical background. Um, obviously, being uh, at Argus for 19 years, I have a lot of skills there. Um, prior to that, I worked for um, Culver Military Academy, where I ran the refrigeration department there for two years. Prior to that, I worked for United Airlines, um, and I'm ex-military, 10 years Air Force, working on fighter jets. So I have a mechanical background, I have the electrical and HVAC, I have the um, school maintenance, and I'm looking at bringing it all together here at Rochester, and I'm just looking forward to the opportunity, and I'd like to thank everyone for that. Welcome. And again, welcome. Thank just, you, just to kind of recap, we wanted to make sure that we had somebody in place to learn that HVAC system from the ground up. We have millions of dollars going into these systems, and we want to make sure that we have somebody long term. And there is, again, no push for Jim. And he has an area of expertise, and we want to make sure that we tap into that. And so we're hoping that that provides for a smooth transition for the district. Come on, Jim. That means you don't want to work forever. True. <laughs> Can we make a motion on the second, the no push for Jim? <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, Brad. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Okay. Now he can't, well, hopefully he'll help take care of that new property once we get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the new property, this time we'll uh, adopt a resolution to purchase the property at 230 West 18th Street. And... I don't know if you want me to read the whole. That's not necessary. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's posted. Uh, basically, purchase price sixty-eight thousand five hundred. So, any questions about the purchase of the property or discussion? If not, we'll need a motion to. Uh, to adopt the resolution for the purchase of said property. I move that we adopt the resolution for purchase of 230 West 18th Street for the amount you just discussed. I can't remember the 68. Yeah, I'm sorry. 68. Five. 68 five. Okay. Motion by Brad. I'll second. Second by Lisa. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. Superintendent business. Just a couple of things that I would like to share. Last week I had the opportunity to sit down with Mayor Denton, Sheriff Chris Saylors, um, Skeeter was there to help on behalf of Rochester Schools and some of the calls that he has um, had to field. Tom Butler was there from the fire department, Andy Schantz as chief of police, Brian Lewis, Andy Perkins, Rick Ranstad, I think that was everybody there. We just share concerns about the leaf burning that's been going on. There have been times when we've actually had to um, switch classrooms or move um, classes off of tennis courts because of that burning that's going on. And it just becomes very problematic um, when you have students that are, um, may have health concerns when it just doesn't provide for good air quality and it becomes a distraction. I know that Ivy Tech has uh, postpone classes, cancel classes due to that. And so at the same respect, we understand where um, the rights are as far as the county being right here behind us. So that meeting went very, very well. And I know that the mayor is very interested in supporting us and taking that through the steps that he needs to do in regards to um, creating new policies and help me out with the proper road word codes to, to help support us in that in a no burn zone area. So he and the highway department, everybody is working together to help support Rochester schools and Ivy Tech, while at the same time going to be able to provide for those out in the county some type of leaf pickup and service and those types of things. So I just want to acknowledge that that still has steps that they need to go through on the county department and with the mayor and his department, but they, they were very supportive of Rochester schools and I believe that moving forward into next summer, um, we're gonna have some clean air here, so, yes. Um, I think last Tuesday was the final straw when Gloria called the, the fire department on the people right behind there. They were not only burning, they were not burning leaves. They were pulling piles of clothes out of trash bags and putting them on the fire. And they, they said they even had uh, mattresses, burning mattresses on them. Yeah. Um, 
everything. Yeah, he, they shared that at the meeting, and I think that we're going to have the support we need moving in. I know that things take time and that you have to go through the processes in red tape, but <coughs> the meeting was, I felt very productive, and I think that steps were going to be taken. Is that what you gathered from that, Scooter? Yeah. I just, so I just want to thank everybody for sitting down at a common table. Is, um, is Park Road the city limit? Or? Yes. Yeah, it's this side. This side is? Uh, and right across the street is county. Yeah, we, so they were looking at it, and I don't want to step on their toes, but what we talked about was um, the 31 bypass, trying to be that marker to help us distinguish um, those calls and that support system to be put into place. So again, I just want to thank them, and hopefully they'll be able to carry through on their end with the processes and everything, but did want to thank them for setting down it a common table and listening to the concerns. Um, also, tomorrow at 10.30, and I know it was short notice, um, Val was able to get uh, Jim Strader and Kurt Pletcher, and I know Jenny intends to be there just to drive down a little bit further the numbers around solar power and whether or not that may be something that we can embrace at uh, Riddle schools and what that might look like for us. So we are not yet ready to make any recommendations, but do want to drive down a little bit further on those numbers and what that might look like. So those discussions are still happening um, and we'll uh, tackle that more tomorrow. And then finally, just wanted to share um, that December, I would propose that we have our next study session on December 8th. Um, I have Z Space, which is a new technology group that Scott Kessler is probably tired of hearing me talk about. I'm so excited about it. But I want to bring that in for our teachers, and I've talked to administrators about being able to free up some teachers that day. Gloria Carvey from Ivy Tech has made a commitment to be there to see that as well because there may be opportunities for us to, to link those modules and that curriculum together with Ivy Tech and what we're trying to do to grow uh, with them moving forward. Also, Terry Lee will be here with um, Project Lead the Way and um, the Biomed part of it and their support that we've had through the Community Foundation and FedCo in regards to that. So uh, I apologize for the switch of dates. We're trying to bring a lot of entities in together at one time and Z Space is very new and very limited on their time and taking those modules around. So I would propose that we have it here December 8th beginning at 9 o'clock like we normally do and then Z Space will be here from 10 to 11 o'clock. So we'll have that opportunity to, to, to talk a little bit about study session items, but then have a demonstration which will include teachers, IB Tech, administrators, the tech committee, those, those people to see that as well while we have them here. Did you, so 9 o'clock instead of an 8.30 or something like that? Nine would start at 9 and they should be here. And we'll, we'll do the best we can to make sure um, what's on the agenda? I mean, we'll, that'll kind of drive that starting time this okay, as well. I too. just knew that several of us couldn't get yeah. in the afternoon. I wanted to make sure. Right. No, it'll be morning, that. and that start time yeah. will be driven by how much is on that agenda. But we'll try to shoot for a nine to eleven time. At the admin building. No, it will be here because of in this room. I've worked with Barb. Bless her heart. She gets those phone calls all the time from me. But we're going to try to have it here where more people can see that, and they'll be able to bring in the modules and set those up to demonstrate. So it'll allow more room and freedom to, to I'll move I'll bring you about. breakfast, Barb. I'll bring you breakfast. That's on record, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, on the camera. You <laughs> and I believe, other than everybody having a great holiday and time off and deserving that, I believe that's all I have. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Any from the public? No, motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the meeting. All right. Second? Second. Second by Brad. All in favor? Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you for coming. See, that was a nice second one, too. Nice. Brought all energy yeah. to a few people. Yeah, we want for breakfast. <laughs> more chop, chop middle or save some money. I can edit that out. Barbara's <laughs> 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 yeah, worth it. It's worth more than a breakfast, I can tell you that. You want a continental breakfast or a real one? <laughs>